friends. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Lauren Cassidy. I'm a marketing manager with Sin7 um, and I'll be one of your MCs for today. Um, so thank you for joining us for Inventoro and Sin7's webinar on how to avoid the overstock problem. Um, today's speakers, you're going to be hearing from Sierra Rogers. She's a Sin7 senior product manager and fantastic. And Redeem Jung, he's the Inventoro co-founder and also fantastic. Hello. <laughs> Uh, for the agenda today, we're just going to go over a few different things throughout this call. There will be plenty of time for Q&A, so if you have questions, don't be afraid to uh, to list them in the Q&A uh, feature. Um, so first, we'll go through key features for inventory management. We're going to start with the basics so everyone has a good handle on what we're really digging into today. Um, we're going to talk about overstock and what is it and give you a full overview. And then we'll get into how to get rid of overstock, how to avoid it altogether, and then we'll get into our Q&A. We want to give you a big picture understanding of the impact of overstock so that you can really take this with you as we move through today's webinar. So uh, just on average, businesses can lose about 25% of profits because of excess inventory costs, which is a huge number. Um, inventory or excess inventory can be tied up between 20 and 40% of your business's revenue. Uh, overstock prompts discount up, overstock prompts up to 50% or more in discounts. That really affects your profit margins, obviously. And then studies show that a return of $4 or more for every dollar invested in an advanced inventory management system. I'm going to pass this over to Sierra. This is for you. Sure. So Lauren, thanks so much uh, for the warm welcome and, and excited to chat with everybody. I think the last slide really helps emphasize why this is such an important topic. I mean, I, I see this on you know LinkedIn all the time talking about um, overstock and how to handle it. So it is, of course, a hot topic right after the holidays for sure. Like how are you dealing with your overstock? Um, but, but anywho, so just, you know, excited to, to chat with everybody about this, but like you said, Lauren, let's start with the basics. Um, I know we have a good mix of both current customers of Sin7, but also folks who are looking at Sin7, um, and kind of evaluating it for their business needs. So just level set, if you're evaluating, uh, you know, any system for your inventory management, it's gotta have these four key features. Um, and I'll go through those. And even as I'm talking about them, um, I'll, I'll have a video showing, or Lauren will have a video showing uh, of us walking through those in Sin7 Core. Um, but before we do the video, just know everything I say is system agnostic. So, you know, whatever system you're looking at, it needs to have these, these four basic inventory management uh, features. Um, but yeah, let's get started with the, the product information management one. So product information, whether you are a B2B or you sell directly to consumers or you've got a brick and mortar store, whatever the case is, you have a whole list of products. These products could be things like finished goods that are sitting on your shelf. They could be things like components because you're manufacturing items, but you need to have a really clear view of all of your products. Here we've got the SKU and the product name. So of course, if you're you know coming from spreadsheets, you might have that, but also the type of product. Is it stock? Is it stuff you wanna trace or is it like services? Um, what category of products is this, which you can uh, cater to your business needs? And then costing method, which I think is really important. We support first in, first out, FIFO, first expired, first out, FIFO. And you can see there that we also support if you want to do batch or serial tracing um, for either of those costing methods, of course. Uh, there's also a number of other fields on there. We'll talk about a few of them did want to highlight that there's a ton of accounting fields in there. We integrate with Xero and QuickBooks, but just know that all of this ties back to accounting. Now that we understand what our products are, we need to understand where they're at and how many we have of them. So here we're looking at the product at different locations, but you can also flip it and look at the locations and see all of your products there. But understanding your stock value for that product, how many is on hand, so on the shelf, how many is available for you to sell, and then allocated means these are the number of this product that might be needed for, say, to fill a sales order. But we haven't gone through the pick, pack, and pro uh, pick, pack, and ship process yet, but you need to kind of reserve them. 
right? Now that we understand where our stock is, if we need to order more, we need to know who our suppliers are for that product. So here we've listed out who our suppliers are and not just who they are, but what was the latest price for this product that I bought from them? So uh, you might have certain deals with them or they might have fixed prices, but this helps you identify uh, in, in automation which supplier to use if you automate your purchase orders. Reorder levels, and I, I laugh because we'll talk about reorder levels a few times today, <clears throat> but reorder levels are at this location, if my inventory dips below this first number, I want to reorder at this higher level. Um, and I encourage you to have reorder levels set for different locations. Your main warehouse, you'll want to order more for them than say your brick and mortar store, right? Um, so, so we'll talk about reorder levels uh, a few times today for sure but it's a, a basic feature. And then we move on to the movements. So now that we know like who we're getting products from, where they are, if we need to reorder them, then you get into like tracing the movements of those products. So we've got sales orders, purchase orders, transfer orders, et cetera. Um, and then this is a, a fun feature I always like to highlight is just additional units of measure for the same product. So I've got one product that I sell individually, but I might also sell it in like a case um, and then last, <clears throat> pardon me, last but not least is channels. So what are the sales channels that you sell this product? Uh, it could be Shopify, Amazon, Walmart, your B2B portal, uh, whether you take it, take those orders over the phone, whatever the case may be. But you should be able to track all of your products and have an accurate view of your inventory um, from one system. And so that kind of wraps up that video and that those those two key features. And then up next is about order management and reports and analytics. So when I say order management, mainly we think about sales orders. So I'd like to show you um, kind of what our sales orders look like. Here we've got our sales orders and these orders, again, they could be coming from Shopify, Amazon, Walmart, uh, over the phone, B2B portal. But I, I love that we can see a whole list of our orders and the different stages that those orders are in. So here's one that's already been paid for, um, but it you know hasn't been fulfilled. Here's one that we're actually going to dive a little deeper into. At the top of any order, we're going to see the, uh, we call it the header information. So about your customer, the ship to, um, maybe if there's any terms because uh, you're, you know, you have like a, a net 30 kind of terms set up with them. And then if we scroll down, we see the different stages or steps that the order has gone through. Uh, of course, there was an order placed. We picked it off the shelf, packed it into a box, shipped it off to the customer. Then we sent an invoice to the customer. And because I've got an integration with either QuickBooks or Xero, that payment information has already synced up with my, my system here. But unfortunately, for one reason or another, the customer decided to return the product. So I can create the credit note and uh, it's right there for me as well. The, the next feature here is restock, which I think is really important. If your customer can, returns an item to you and it's in perfect condition, you should just turn around and put it back on the shelf, right? For, for the next customer to come through. Um, so, so the ability to restock that product um, and have it all linked in one place is, is really handy. Now, I just throw a whole lot at you and all of that information is uh, data that's stored in this system. And what do you do with that data? Like you can see in the, the screen there, there's a whole bunch of dashboards to help you understand the health of your business. But today we're talking about how do we improve things? How do we move forward with the stock that we have now? Um, how do we avoid making mistakes, you know, et cetera. Um, Sin7 Core has over 70 reports built into it. Um, so just out of the box, but then we can also take and build, uh, you know, more advanced tools like MRP, or we can work with folks like Inventoro to give you even deeper insights and suggestions on how to, to really thrive as a business. So I think that kind of flows into um, me handing the mic over to Redeem for a minute <laughs> and letting him, him take it away. Okay, thank you for those words. And uh, um, so let's just wait for the next slide. Okay, understanding overstock. Right, so we first need to kind of think about what, what the hell is overstock anyways, because I'm, um, 
I'm pretty confident that uh, all of you are aware of, of overstock. I mean, there's probably a reason why you came to this webinar. But to understand how much of it uh, is, is actually overstock and what consists of overstock, you need to uh, understand how much inventory you, you need, right? Which sounds like an easy question to have, like how much inventory you need. But to answer that question, you need to understand your future sales because your inventory is basically getting prepared for whatever you will sell in the future, right? So that, that's kind of when we come into the equation as inventory is we, we uh, connect to SIN7's data and everything that has been sort of said so far, we kind of analyze the data and we run our forecasting algorithms to, to see uh, your future sales and to understand your future demand. I mean, there's a disconnection between your future demand and whatever you have right now in inventory. There's factors like lead times, there's factors like transportation, there's, there's factors which basically cannot make an equation between today's demand and uh, whatever, uh, whatever decisions you're making about inventory right now. And I think this is, this is the moment where you, where you make overstock, right? I mean, you're, you're trying to, by, by filling up your inventory, by getting prepared for your future sales, you're making assumptions about what will happen in a, in a couple of weeks, right? Due to all the restraints that you have on, on your suppliers and, and everything else, or be it production, so you're making a guess. And by making a wrong guess, you, you create overstock, right? So that's why we kind of come in and try to narrow that uh, forecasting part into much more precision. And we, and we, and we do that on an on a SKU level, right? So a lot of our clients would have thousands, if not tens of thousands of, uh, of SKUs, and they would have them in various locations, right? So be it brick and mortar stores, be it... Uh, be in different warehouses, and that sort of kind of all multiplies because we need to be looking at the at the demand of the lowest common denominator. Now, if you have disability, if you if you can look forward to the future, then and only then you can understand what is your overstock, right? Because then you understand your future future demand, and if you have more in your inventory than your future demand tells you you should have. Uh, then you have overstock, and then you can divide what, what is actually the optimum stock versus versus your overstock, right? So into the equation uh, comes uh, dead stock as well, right? So dead stock being definitely a part of overstock because um, we're going to get into this later on today, but there's there are certain types of overstock. Some of it we might just call healthy, and some of it we might just call toxic, and the toxic ones being that the, it's it's the goods that never move. Right now, we, we we do the calculations on something that we call days to optimum. Right, so when we look at overstock, we look at your sales and we try to understand how many days will you be selling the overstock become before it becomes optimum stock. Right, so this can go this can go into hundreds of days on a on a, on a typical day. You would have 150 days, 200 days of overstock, and we kind of measure it until two years and then we stop. Right. But rest assured, there's, there's a lot of overstock around there that would be in tens of years or 20 years or 50 years, right? So people make these decisions that are enormous, right? So you buy something in, in the amount of 20,000 pieces and you sell three a month, right? So then you kind of look at how long will it take, you know, before I sell this out and, and you come into extreme numbers that actually overstock uh, can be, right? But dead stock, dead stock in particular, is, is is critical in the sense that it, you know no no matter how long you wait, you will not sell it because nobody wants to buy it, right? So, how much of your overstock is dead uh, definitely tells you the your amount of opportunity to optimize your overstock and stockouts, right? So there's a there's a lot of conception that stockouts are the opposite of overstock, and they are right because. You know, overstock means too much inventory. Stockouts mean means not enough inventory, right? So when when you did the opposite mistake, you did not order too much. You didn't you you ordered too little. But the the, the misconception over here is that overstock is is a way how to protect yourself against stockouts. But we clearly see on our data that that's definitely not the case, right? So uh, because both of those phenomena happen side by side, and you can have stockouts and huge overstock at the same time, as would of, often be the case. So some businesses, and they're, they're definitely more mature, they're 
I would call them pre-enterprise or even enterprise businesses can have a strategic overstock, right? So let's, let's you know, pile up. Let's just be prepared for anything that can come, right? Let's, let's just do a huge marketing campaign. Let's make sure we satisfy all of our customers. But in order to make those decisions, I mean, uh, to, to keep, you know, overstock as a strategic part of their business, they have to be making very well of the assumptions, what, what exactly is the need and how much overstock they can create and what is the risk associated with it and what is the cost associated with it and is it worthwhile to, to actually take this risk and, and et cetera, et cetera. So it gets very, very elaborate. Right, so yeah. if we can. So Redeem, yeah, to your point, you we've got overstock. So we've got you know too many products on the shelf. We've got dead stock where it's stock that's collecting dust because it's not selling. And then you've got yeah. stockouts, which is empty shelves, you know, of a particular product. And you kind of already talked about what causes all of that overstock. Um, yeah. So I, I guess we're kind of actually rolling into the next slide, which is um, more what, what can we be doing about this? Yeah, yeah. Now I'll, I'll just I'll just quickly wrap up this one, right? So what causes overstock definitely is 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 making purchase orders, right? So it's it's you as the owner, uh, you just did not make a good good enough purchase order. The 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 one and only sort of way to to create overstock and to reduce it in the future is making good purchase orders whilst you're ordering inventory. Right. And to making to be able to be making good purchase orders, you have to see future demand. So the future tells you how you should behave today, kind of. That sort of a principle, right now. So we're looking at. So we did we did a campaign together, uh, Inventor and Sin Seven, and we we offered to to Sin Seven clients, you know, the possibility to run a, a what we call an overstock report to get some sort of numbers, right? So this has been based on thirty three Sin Seven customers, but and and you would think that those who clicked on yes, I want the overstock report would be those that have. A little bit of a, a overstock issue, but but the numbers that came out seventy five percent of stock is overstock. I mean that that is just tells you, and this is average, right? So this tells you the the sheer amount of stock that can be overstock, right? And there's money associated with it, right? And you're thinking like, hey, it's going to sell anyways, but there's money associated with keeping your overstock, right? You have to pay for floor space, you have to. Give the bank, you know, interest on on the on the money you've used to buy the stock at the first place, right? So there's a huge difference between having overstock and not, right? So it's you cannot just only solve it by 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 waiting. And then we talked about the health, right? We talked about you know dead stock versus overstock, right? So as you see, uh, fifty percent of overstock on a on a on a typical day is dead, right? And, and the average value would be a half a million dollars. So this is not like, you know, pocket money that we're talking about. This is, these are numbers that are holding your business back. And these are numbers that are, you know, changing you as a business owner from uh, something we might call like a positive zero to a profitable business, right? I mean, these numbers really shift the the, the results, the financial results of a company. If you're If you have the ability to, to work with overstock and, and to reduce it and to uh, and to analyze it. Yeah. Well, and and to like add a little silver lining to these, uh, frankly, kind of terrifying numbers. <laughs> like it's good to know that from a business perspective, if I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh wow, I'm not alone. Like I'm not the only one with overstock problems. I'm not the only one up against this challenge or hurdle. You know, I'm not the only one looking for a solution. Um, there's other business, it looks like, you know, tons of businesses out there are struggling with this, especially right after the holiday season, you know, maybe for the holiday season, I went out and stocked up on that product thinking it was the right thing. And then the holidays hit and then I'm left with 75% of that product. It didn't sell. Right. So the question that comes next is <clears throat> what do we do? Like, how do we solve this problem? Um, which I think is, is where we're headed. Eric. Yeah, definitely. Before before we hit into the strategies of what to do with overstock, I mean, we were just we were just having a laugh about this, uh, you know, earlier today. That uh, I think it was like yesterday. Mark Zuckerberg did a did a video about his VR goggles called Quest, mm -hmm. and he was ch ranting about how they're so much better than the Apple VRs, right? <laughs> And I just think it's all about overstock. I think they just produce too many and now they cannot sell it. So they had to call in the big guy to, to, to promote this stuff because 
it's piling up in their inventory. So definitely, you're not alone into this. In this, and it happens to it happens to uh, huge players as well. And I think there is before we get into how to how to get rid of older stock, right? It's important to say that the bigger of a business you are, the bigger of a overstock problem you are, you are going to have, right? So there's a misconception about sort of small but businesses going sort of to medium, going and on a person like I'm going to apply the same principles that got me here, and it's gonna continue to to work. But retail and wholesale and, and e-commerce, the complexity is exponential with 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 your size. So the, the more you sell, the more you operate, the more complex your business gets, right? So there is a glass ceiling where traditional like gut feelings about inventory will stop working, right? I mean, there's no way a human brain can comprehend uh, 1,000 SKUs in three locations and kind of understand what, what will happen with each one of those SKUs tomorrow. There's no way how you can just remember all of that, right? And there's no way how you can trace that in an Excel, right? You would have to sort of be creating excels all day every day and do nothing but that right so it it doesn't sort of move you forward you have to sort of analyze the data as a whole i mean sin 7 is a great source of data but then then you then you have a machine like ours you know which which can run their ai on it and and try to give you answers on on your future needs and on your inventory yeah right and- so I was just saying, every every customer I've had the privilege of talking to here recently, they're all talking about 2024 growing. Like we're going to add more production lines. We're going to add more locations. We're going to add more. So to your point, Redeem, like if you're thinking about that growth and it doesn't even have to be like you were saying, if I've got four production lines and I'm adding another four, it's not just, oh, it's four times harder. It's compounded every single time it's just going to get more and more complicated and more and more um stress to that you can't manage in your head right so yeah i agree you absolutely need a system to help manage all of these processes and and to be looking out for you because i'm sure i love spreadsheets but i don't want to be sitting in spreadsheets all day long you know trying to to figure out my forecast and my overstock and and uh all of my my purchase orders and stuff um but yeah that and I'm sure that nobody has the marketing budget to bring in Zuckerberg for every, you know, oh, we have an overstock. Let's let's just bring in the big gun marketing. Oh, we don't have a budget. Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, th- th- there's a, there's a point to be made, and and I think we're writing about this too much. So it'll be the last thing I say about this, but. I mean, we do not know exactly where the line is, right? So when do you become that sort of a business that you need to sort of start using cutting edge technology to to operate your inventory, you know, algorithmic sort of way of working, right? But we do know that all big players do it, right? So you definitely come to a stage where you have to make the decision if you want to grow, right? So there's there's not a single sort of, you know, business out there an sp500 or whatever that would not sort of be using a technology like that right so they all need to do it to to, to stay alive right so there's a there's a point we don't know where <laughs> but but it is it's kind of leads you to start relying more and more on on technology to operate a, a retail or a wholesale business e-commerce business right so how to get rid of overstock, right? So the number one question. Well, first of all, let's just say that getting over, rid of overstock is very, very hard, right? So don't be sort of hard on yourself if you're if you're struggling with it, right? So getting rid of stockouts is a matter of a week, right? You just order stuff, and then you have you know, then you don't have the stockouts, and that's it, right? But overstock, uh, you have to kind of sell it out, right? And that can take months, if not years, right? But just to make it easier for you. We decided we're going to list out three strategies that you can do, right? So let's talk about the first one, do nothing and wait. So do nothing and wait applies to your overstock items which sell, right? And if they do sell and you see a path, you see a path that they will sort of sell out eventually, well, then just wait, right? Don't discount them. Don't sort of do anything with them. Just, Just wait. Right? And they will sell out. Maybe it will be a half year or something, but it's still sort of worthwhile to, to sit on them. For that, you need to understand which items there are, right? So there is this sort of like element of analysis and you know reporting that, that you need to be doing. And again, this is this is location specific, 
right? So what can be overstock in one branch doesn't have to be overstock in another branch because the velocity of sales, you know, differ from points of sales, right? I mean, this could be a different town. This can be a, a, a different website. This can be a different marketplace. And, you know, your SKUs will behave differently. And so you need to analyze like on, on, the, on the sales level. Okay, so discount strategy. Now you can discount your overstock to get rid of it, but rest assured that discounts are extremely complicated, right? And there's a lot, a lot of calculations to be done if you want to analyze, you know, if your discounts are worthwhile. Because what they do uh, is okay, they take away your margin. That's kind of understandable. You can make that calculation. But they also take away the sales of other non discounted items away from you, right? So we call this cannibalization, right? Where you, where you give your customers something they don't need on a discount, they, you know, spend their money, but they don't have more money to spend. So they already bought the discounted stuff and they're not going to buy your top seller, which is not discounted because, you know, they don't have the money anymore, right? So some items can be you know, have this cannibal effect, some don't. And there's a lot, a lot of calculations to be done around this to understand how to do your discounts properly. But I'm not going to leave you in despair. <laughs> and I'm just going to tell you that the first rule you should apply if you want to understand which items should be discounted, then it's the growing items, right? So items that are growing in sales, and this can even be dead stock, uh, are worthwhile to discount because on a typical day, on a growing item, and again, you need to understand which ones they are, you will see that a discount accelerates the sales and kind of boosts it. Like, you know, a discount will fuel up the fuel up the, the growth, right, even faster, right? So it's a fast strategy to get rid of something. Again, you do have to understand which, which one of your items are growing, right? Okay, and the last part, which is the probably the least sort of popular, and this is a lot to do with that stock, right, is just to sell it back to the guy who sold it to you in the first place, right? There's a, there's a mind block behind it because you as a business owner, you want to focus on sales and you're focusing on those top sellers that are making you the dollars, right? Nobody wants to be looking at that stock. I mean, there's dust on it. It's been there for years, right? You do not want to even talk about it, right? So <laughs> to find yourself in the mindset like, hey, today we're going to be dealing with that stock takes a lot of, um, I don't know, energy, I guess, right? So that's why you need to sort of use that energy and sort of deal with the issue like fast. Right? Don't try to get rid of dead stock like selling one by one. Find anybody who will buy everything away from you, right? You might lose money on it. But then again, you might be doing that calculation if like keeping the stuff uh, and paying for warehouse space is, is cheaper and how long, right? So that calculation is not that hard, but it will give you the opportunity to free up cash. And you can use that freed up cash to take care of your stock out. So you can use that cash for advertising. You can use that cash and buy a new car or go on a holiday. I mean, like you're the owner, <laughs> use it for whatever you need to. But, you know, this is, this is a lot of cash that has been held up over there, right? We talked about sort of your overstock being half a million dollars, half of it being dead stock. That's a quarter of a million dollars you can free up which doesn't happen every day, right? So it's, it's worthwhile to be thinking about uh, thinking about some of your items, like in the sense like, you know, can the supplier, that's the, that's the typical person who would actually buy it back from me, under what terms? And usually they would say yes, because usually that supplier knows a place where it's not dead stock, right? And they, they know where to sell it, right? Where people want it, right? Again, dead stock is always site-specific, right? So yeah, three basic strategies. There's more, right? But if you're if you're like into, you know, what do I need to do tomorrow? That's understandable. Do nothing or wait. Discount in a clever way. Use your growing items or sell it back. Yeah, and I, I like the the third one there because I'm constantly thinking about the manufacturing process. And in manufacturing, waste and scrap of like raw materials is a big concern. Um, and one of the ways for manufacturers to make back some money is to sell that scrap back to their supplier or vendor. So if you've got like a sheet metal and you're just stamping out circles out of sheet metal, 
the the rest of that sheet metal can be sold back to your supplier. So, you know, I think that, yes, this is an important strategy to think about with overstock, but we can apply that same strategy to things like scrap so that, um, that you know, again, you can go buy a, a fancier boat or car or or hire a billionaire to to add. Sorry, I'm still stuck on that joke. I'm I'm gonna keep coming back to. <laughs> <laughs> please do, please do. Right. Okay, so this is a screenshot from our app, right? So we we are the app that forecasts your inventory, and we also are the app that tells you the 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 health and the quality of your products and of your inventory. So we take all of your products and we divide them into winners, which are top sellers. They're the like best selling items into chasers, which still sell, not in huge amounts, but they still sell. And then into losers, which are your dead stock, right? So if you're, if you're working with overstock, you see that all of those three parts, I mean, I understand that it's the screenshot is not the biggest one in the world, but you see the red line, which represents how much inventory you have in each category, right? And this screenshot is extremely optimistic, right? Because it's saying that most of your inventory is in winners, little bit is in chasers, and then almost nothing is dead stock, right? So the reality, uh, once we connect our, like, you know, a random customer would be like dead stock being 50%, you know, then there's a bunch <laughs> in chasers, and then there's not enough in winners, right? But looking at dashboards like this, and, and obviously we give you the information on the basis of like each SKU, like each number, like how much actually overstock do I have on the dollar? We show you that in a in a table. But this gives you the, the ability to visualize, you know, is my inventory healthy? Is my overstock problem, you know, a tragedy? Or if, if it's like a, something that, you know, will resolve itself by waiting or, or what do I need? To do with this, right? So, in, in the same way, and I and I'm not showing it in the on this on this screenshot, but we also give you the the number of growing items. Like we give you a list. Like these are the items, right? And if you know nothing about discount strategy, then just like you know, take the list and discount everything on fifteen percent. You're going to be fine, right? So, but it's understanding the visibility, right? That it's the first step to to fighting this problem, right? Again, what we said, it's hard. You're not alone. <laughs> it will take time. But the first step you need to do is understand. Understand the sheer size of it to gain visibility in, into your overstock, into your inventory altogether, and then start making strategies and movements going out from there. Okay. So how to get rid of overstock, right? So uh altogether in the sense like you know stop creating more overstock because you've created overstock yourselves sorry to be so hard about it but <laughs> that's what happened right so you did your po's you ordered something that didn't sell and now you have it and that's your overstock so the first thing you need to do is start making better decisions on your purchase orders so no matter what, whoever will tell you, the only place and the best place to control your inventory, to be the inventory manager you always wanted to be, is on the PO level. It's when you send your supplier a PO. That's the moment where you're either the hero of the day or you're creating your problem a, a tragedy. And as we said, like, you know, a lot of you guys would rely on reorder points, which is fine. I mean, reorder points are, are a good thing. But what you often rem stop, you know, forget to do is to recalculate them all the time, right? I mean, your seasons change. And let's say you've created your reorder point on a high season. Then you forget to change it, right? Then the sales drop because Christmas is over. But you forgot to sort of fiddle it around. And then you order more. Right. Or it's the other problem around, right? So you said your reorder points on a on a soft strategy, and then suddenly you know the demand goes up, and you're like full with stockouts, and you know stockouts are bad for business, right? You're, you're losing your customers, you're losing your revenue, you're losing your reputation, and you're gonna have to sort of spend money on marketing to get new customers back, right? The demands you lost, so 
making a good PO is a way to avoid overstock and stockouts altogether. Now, to, to, to do that, you need to see reorder points as a fluid thing, right? Sometimes it's, you know, you do it at 30, sometimes you do it at 100, sometimes you don't order even if there's zero inventory, right? And again, it's about the ability to look into the future and it's about your ability to understand what the error of the business is in terms of like, you know, your suppliers come late. You know, sometimes that happens all, to, all the time, right? So you need to be thinking about that, create a little bit of a buffer stock, you know, for those dis disruptions of whatever may come and making your order decisions based on that, right? So where, again, you know, starting with forecasting is a, is a good idea, Um we use AI for forecasting. We've been developing it for 15 years. So we know a little bit about it, but hey, who am I to tell you what to do? <laughs> you, you, you're, you're the master of, of your business, right? But the, the ability to, to, to forecast correctly, highly accurately forecasting is the first step to making a good decision on a PO. A good decision on a PO will result on, on creating less overstock altogether and will result on fewer stockouts at the same time right so you 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 reduce your capital and you increase your income and you don't get rid of stockouts by creating overstock less overstock less stockouts at the same time it starts with forecasting right so yeah and maybe there's a thing about to be said that like you know we've been working with sense 7 a lot and uh, we've been investing a lot of time into harvesting the data that they are so uh, carefully created by, by creating a good you know, business model and a good, good software that allows us to analyze the data, which we are definitely a, an add-on business and we're definitely an add-on software and we're reliant on the data that we read. Since 7 has proven to be a very good partner in, in supplying us you know, good quality data so highly. Highly recommend you know using using both of the systems together. I I appreciate that and and um, redeem. It sounds like you're kind of like the personal trainer for businesses. You're like you can't just eat a salad once and think that you're gonna get skinny. Like you, you can't just lift a weight once and think you're gonna go to the Olympics for for lifting. Like this is something you have to constantly be monitoring. And to your point, you need to have good solid data in a system to be able to analyze it so that you can come up with reports like what you've got on the screen here. Like to be able to tell what my overstock is, I need to have accurate inventory to know, you know, where my orders are, where my stock is, maybe my warehouse is, you know, my warehouse in this city is doing better than that warehouse. Maybe they've got different products that are performing at different levels. So all of this is stuff that needs to be constantly monitored, but use tools like the Inventoro tool to be able to monitor that for you and make suggestions. Um, so yeah, so so tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing on the screen. Yeah, okay. So this is our first screen that that, that we use. I mean, I'm, I'm not showing the whole software. We're just showing you two screens today, but this is the first one. So you open our software, you connect your, your SIN7 account or other accounts. You source in your historical sales. We forecast the future sales. And on the first day, we show you your overstock number, right? So it's that red number at the top right corner gives you exact value in dollars or whatever, whatever is your overstock, right? Obviously, we'll, we're going to drill down that number to, to the SKUs. We're, we're going to go into extreme detail, but we think that this visibility of giving our customers the everyday view of the problem helps them to understand, helps them like, you know, should I concentrate my head on this? You know, sh should I invest my time in this? Depends on how, you know, <laughs> how big it is or, or it's not, right? So this constant, this constant visibility into your inventory and into the future helps you to make those everyday decisions better and faster with fewer people, right? A lot of our customers have tens, if not hundreds of suppliers, right? Sort of just only to be like doing POs for a hundred suppliers requires manpower, you know, in a group really just to, just to fill out the thing. And, and we're talking about that, you know, you need to be putting in the correct numbers, which is forecasting based, right? So there's a lot of sort of work that, that can be taken away from you 
and it's based on this constant everyday monitoring and everyday recalculating and analyzing if it's going up or if it's going down, is it time to order? If it's not, right? So what will happen, right? And so so we, we give you that first impression of what your forecast is on an SKU level and we give you the overstock number, right? So let's make a test. I mean, like um, how many of you know exactly on the dollar how much your overstock is worth? Raise your hand. I don't see anybody know. raising their hands. I don't I? see anybody raising their hands. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the idea of, you know, the visibility of your overstock helps you to, to tackle the problem. We talked about the strategies. We talked about doing it every day. We talked about, you know, changing the work ethic of your POs, of the way you think about your business, gives you the, the space and the ability to grow tenfold because suddenly you're prepared on a completely different way. Um, we are going to start getting into the, the Q and a portion. So if you do have questions, please feel free to submit them. We've got a couple already. Um, but really quick, I just wanted to touch on, um, how Sin7 and Inventoro can help you. Um, you know, I think Redeem and Sierra have already touched on that, so I'm not going to go too long into it. Um, but these are all the different features and capabilities of Sin7. Um, working with Inventoro, I think there's a lot of opportunity for any company to be able to really predict and plan for their future. And I think every business wants that, right? Um, you know, we'll help you with your inventory management. That's what we're here for, um, for, you know, sales orders and POS orders. These are all different varying parts of what Sin7 can do. Uh, but when you can connect us with Inventoro, you get insights and data-driven uh, opportunities that you get to make that you maybe wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, so it's something we want to leave you with today because, of course, we're biased. And Sierra said it in the beginning. A lot of this was just good information for you to have. But we we do firmly believe that we're a great opportunity for anyone who wants to use this and, and grow. Um, I will take us to Q&A. Um, and if you have questions, please submit them. If you think about this later and you have other questions for Redeemer Sierra, um, we'll be sending a follow-up email It'll have this recording of this webinar and it will also have the videos. So if you had any issues seeing those earlier, um, you'll be able to watch those in depth. Um, but Redeem and Sierra, we had a question from Evan and Evan says that they currently use Sin7 and they're going to do 100 million this year. How can Sin7 help uh, with not getting overstock in the first place? They don't currently have overstock. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I think I think Redeem uh, covered a handful of strategies, and I would I would echo those. Is first and foremost, um, check out those reorder points and make sure that you're monitoring and updating those on a regular basis. Uh, we did another webinar back last year. I want to say it was in July. It was like um, Christmas in July, like preparing for holidays in July. Um, so for your holidays, you want to have a higher number of items on your shelves to, to sell, but then once the holidays wrap up or whatever your busy season is, you know, you're not going to need as many of those products. So make sure that you're monitoring and adjusting those, uh, reorder points in Sin7. Um, to another point was, you know, I showed a video and I apologize. They were blurry. That that's totally on me. Um, the, you know, we looked at the products and then we could see the uh, reorder point for those products at different locations. So I go back to, you want to have different reorder points for your warehouse, from your brick and mortar store, from maybe it's a warehouse in a different state that's performing differently, et cetera. But that's all things that you can do just in Sin7. Um, Redeem, I don't know if you wanna add any layers of complexity to that that Inventorio can, can amplify. Oh yeah, sure. Sort of like you know, about by connecting our our software to to Sin Seven, you you fire it up with AI, and 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 all of those sort of manual tasks will be will be left to the machine, which which produces very high accuracy, which is completely transparent to 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 its users, right? So, highly recommend you know connecting us. It will it will help you. It will speed up the thing. It will put visibility into 
into your inventory issues and it will help you automate, which I think is, is a good path forward, right? So it's a hundred million. Congratulations, by the way. I mean, do you stop there or, or are you looking into another hundred million? I would say so. So uh, get more technology in the house and please try us. <laughs> Uh, Evan actually had an up, uh, a second question, a follow-up to that. So he did ask uh, if they add inventory to Sin7, how much time daily do you think the upkeep will be? Yeah. So uh, again, this is this is company specific, but I'll, I'll give you an example of, uh, of a client of ours who, who had two people in purchasing before they uh, before they got our software and then you know, got our software, only one person was doing purchasing, right? So this is not to say you're supposed to fire your staff. I'm, sh I'm sure you can give them more more opportunities elsewhere. But in terms of the, the, the amount of work, right? So we, we, we put a number of 20 hours per week that we can save. But uh, again, this is company specific. A lot of it is dependent on how many suppliers you have, how many SKUs you have. But... Um, I think it's more on the quality of time as well, right? It, because we do the calculations, we do everything for you and kind of set it, you know, ready for every day, right? I just, just got a client in, in January, they are 60 million business, right? So they would have a department for people trying to guess their future sales. And, and, and then the, and the cycle that they were doing on this internal forecasting was, you know, per month, right? So they would have these monthly meetings where they would sort of sit down, you know, let's take a look at another two months, right? So we, we've, we put in our system and we, and we, you know, fasten that cycle to every day, right? So you, you get a different way of work by, you know, looking at your forecast every day, adjusting your forecast every day, whereas running into, you know, monthly meetings, which can cause, you know, problems, even just meeting to meeting, right? So it's not only about the time saved. I mean, it's 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 a lot about it. Is the the ability to look into the data instantly. Um, we are pretty short on time, but there are a couple of questions I think I could combine into one, and then a couple other questions that we'll try and get to. If for some reason we can't, we will follow up with you. Um, but redeem a lot of the questions or a few of the questions are based on um, if they're interested in exploring Inventoro. The use in seven, um, is it available globally? Um, do they find it in the app store? What are their best next steps to work with you? Oh, yeah, sure. So uh, <clears throat> uh, just go to our website, you know, take a free account. It will take you and ask you to connect your SIN7 account. Dependent on the size of your business, this might take minutes or hours or even days to download all your data. Once, the, once that is done, we will do your forecast. And uh, I think we're giving like a first month free, you know, on for the for for who everyone you know attended this this webinar. So you'll definitely get a chance to try out the system in its full capacity, um, right? So that's pretty much it. Go to our website, and yes, we are globally available. We do have clients on all continents, going from Australia, South America, North America, Europe, Asia. We have everywhere. So. Um, Definitely connect your connect your account, and if you have any issues, want to ask any 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 questions. Obviously, you know we did the we did the fast overview. There's there's setting up. There's there's fiddling, right? So there's there's specifics for each company that it has. You know, it's absolutely normal to to spend like uh, you know time to to getting all those constraints into into the system. The system is prepared for huge clients. It has no reason to believe why we could not serve everyone in this room. The last question I think I'll end with, because we have had a few people ask, um, deals with historical sales and historical data. Um, how much historical data does Sin7 need, does Inventoro need um, for, for Inventoro to make calculations that are reliable, um, that are optimal uh, to, to kind of do the forecasting and have good data ahead of them? Yeah, so I mean, the, the minimum is half a year. Uh, the optimum would be two years, right? So the two years is uh, is our way of uh, understanding seasonalities. Because I mean, if if a, 
if a spike in sales happens once, you know, then it can be a seasonal trend. But if we see it re repeating every year, then we're very confident about it being a seasonal trend. So this this helps us to identify, uh, you know, the, the future. But I mean, this is this is becoming academical. I mean, but even if we have two years, we we put most of the emphasis of the algorithms on the on the last year as opposed to the two years back. I mean, the the two year before really is for those reference for those seasonality algorithms that we use. And we do have about 100 algorithms which all work differently, but some of them are, you know, in need of understanding these seasonal trends. And Redeem, you've, you've told me before, at least, that it doesn't necessarily need to be two years of historical transactions in Sin7. So if you're newer to Sin7 and you've only got, you know, three months of, of hanging out with us and using our system, you can still take advantage of Inventoro and still get uh, very high quality insights. A hundred percent, right? So there's there's definitely um, there's definitely ways so you can connect as many systems as you want, and we'll we'll try to figure out a way how to merge your data. We like to have one source because it just you know cleans things up. But you know uh, our work with Sin Seven clients uh, has has a lot of the times been you know we, we take the sales history from somewhere else, and then we continue with Sin Seven. We do have one more question, if we can do it. Um, is there a way to upload um, minimum and maximum inventory levels for SKUs as a mass upload? And this is our last question. Sierra, did you want to take this guy? So I, I can attempt. Um, we do have a number of ways that you can upload uh, mass information about uh, products, or um, you can actually download your products from, say, Shopify, so that you're getting uh, the, the consistent product name and the SKU and the and the, all that information. Um, of that exact field, I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I'll follow up on that one for sure. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, whenever they say min max, do they mean the reorder points or the reorder levels? Or are they, um, is there, you know, are we using different vocabulary or, or what have you? This sounds like a question that we will follow up with you on. Um, don't worry, everyone has <laughs> questions today. Um, we have your your names associated with your questions. So um, if we need to follow up, we are more than happy to. Again, if you have other questions, we'll be sending out um, an email tomorrow um, with this recording and the other recordings. So feel free to reply, ask other questions. That's what we're here for. Um, but with that, uh, I just want to take a minute. Thank you, Redeem. Thank you, Sierra. And Stephen on the back end, who's been answering questions I think this was a super valuable conversation um, and there's a lot of opportunity in, in what we talked about today and understanding overstock and overcoming overstock. So um, just thank you all so much. I hope everyone has a great week. And, and with that, I think I will let you all go.